one to the city's uh, newest vaccination site. This is going to be a high capacity site that Dr. Ojukutu and her team have set up. It opens at noon, so I'm instructed that we have to keep it tight today. So we're not cutting off questions, but we, we're going to keep it brisk. Um, I am joined here by Dr. Ojukutu of the Boston Public Health Commission, Chief Itawu of the, our Economic Opportunity and Inclusion Cabinet. Um, Rodrigo Martinez, who is running this site as our community partner, along with Nancy Rachel, Rachel Wilson, um, part of this team. Thank you so much. And my colleagues on the city council, uh, Councilor Ruthsi Luijen, as well as Councilor Tanya Fernandez-Anderson, who I will invite everyone to speak afterwards. So just a quick update on a few items. Um, <clears throat> as of today, 8 a.m., 17,861 city employees are in full compliance with the city's vaccination policies. That represents a jump of over 1,000 employees since last Monday's. And so as we've seen in other cities and as we've seen at the state, proof of vaccination um, for the safety of our workforce and our residents makes a big difference in boosting our rates across the city, which still remains the most powerful tool that we have to keep everyone safe and end this pandemic. The deadline was this past Saturday. And so as of today, the first work day back in the office, the city has already started reviewing submissions to ensure every employee will get the opportunity to get vaccinated and submit their information. We continue to have very successful clinics specifically open to uh, the city workers, whether it is through our public safety partners or through the Boston Teachers Union. And this wonderful place will be a resource as well for the, the many employees in our school department um, in addition. After the city review over this week, as we've already officially notified our workforce, employees will receive individual notifications and uh, those who need to continue uploading or submitting their proof of vaccination will begin to be placed on unpaid administrative leave um, starting on the 24th. Today we are celebrating another testing site that the Boston Public Health Commission has stood up to make sure that testing is accessible across all of our neighborhoods in Boston. I know I was on a, a briefing with the City Council earlier today, and that continues to be an area of focus for all of our councilors as well, so I'll invite them up to, to speak about the continued need. This is a high-capacity site right here at the Bruce Bowling Building with free walk-in testing Tuesday through Saturday, 12 to 8 p.m. These are going to, and you'll hear more about it, but self-administered PCR tests with results usually turned around within 24 hours, and this is by CIC Health. We have flyers that um, are going to be posted throughout the, the neighborhoods in multiple languages, really ensuring that people will know about this resource and that it will be fully available to our residents. And I know CIC will get into this more, but I am so excited at the potential for this to be one more way to con cut down the lines that we've been seeing across the city. Just as a point of reference, when we visited the Anna Cole testing site, which had been one of the city's busiest testing sites, they had room for 11 people to be tested at once. Here there's room for 20. Here there's room for 20 people to be tested at the same time, 50 people to be in line safely here inside. And um, Mr. Martinez will tell you more. but. To manage the line, there will be cards given out so that anybody who comes in after those 50 who are already here, should the need arise, will be given a return time to be able to come right in so that we don't have people waiting for hours outside or in, in those conditions. I also want to discuss our um, clinics that we are opening up in other parts of the city. Dr. Ojukutu will announce new clinics starting this week and next week in Dorchester and in Mattapan, as well as the existing clinics that have free walk-in testing at the Anna Cole Community Center in Jamaica Plain, Monday through Thursdays, 12 to 7 p.m., Friday, 12 to 5 p.m., and Sundays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We've seen the lines come down considerably since those hours have been expanded. The West End House in Alston is another Boston Public Health Commission free walk-in clinic for testing and that is open Monday through Fridays 6 30 a.m. to 10 30 a.m. 
and Saturdays 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 a.m. We also want to make sure that our small businesses who have been bearing so much of this pandemic have support and relief. And Chief Itawu has really pushed to ensure that we are working with all of our partners and using the resources available. And so we are going to make a request to the Boston City Council for replenishment of the Small Business Relief Fund with $5 million from our ARPA funding to get out right away into our communities to support 300 additional small businesses. These will be businesses that are already have already been applying through the existing fund and we're also coordinating with state officials so that small businesses would potentially have access to both local and state grant funds. Chief Itawu has also arranged for Small Business Strong to offer technical assistance to all of those who will be participating in this program. New applicants will be invited to apply in early February and uh, we encourage everyone to sign up for our small business newsletter to get all of the information and updated details on this and other programs. Okay, un poco en español. Uh, los números actualizados del mandato de vacunación de empleados de la ciudad a las 8 de la mañana hoy, uh, 17,861 empleados cumplen con el mandato un aumento de más de mil empleados desde el lunes pasado. La ciudad revisará todo para asegurarse de que todos sus empleados hayan tenido la oportunidad de vacunarse y presentar su información. Los emple empleados serán notificados la próxima semana de su incumplimiento. Um, esto es, esta es una clínica nueva eh, y um, En la ciudad, eh, Boston Public Health Commission hace que las pruebas sean más accesibles. Abrimos un centro de pruebas de gran capacidad aquí mismo en el edificio Bruce Bowling. Pruebas gratuitas sin cita, previa de martes a, martes a sábado de 12 a 8 de la tarde. Pruebas de PCR autoadministradas con resultados, resultados disponibles en 24 horas aproximadamente. Los servicios de pruebas realizados es, um, por CIC Health y um, estoy muy agradecido por, por sus esfuerzos. Esta semana y, esta, eh, y la semana próxima, las clínicas abrirán en Dorchester y Mattapan también. Actualmente tenemos clínicas en el Anna M. Cole Community Center en Jamaica Plain y West End House en Alston, que también no necesitan citas. Estamos aquí para hablar de nuestro continuo apoyo a las pequeñas empresas durante la pandemia también. La ciudad pondrá 5 millones de dólares en el fondo de ayuda a la pequeña empresa uh, a través de, gracias al liderazgo de Chief Shugun Irou, puede apoyar a otras 300 pequeñas empresas y las empresas cubiertas por el mandato de vacunación y son categorías de prioridad en el actual fondo. Uh, en, en, al mismo tiempo, coordinamos con el, el gobierno estatal para que las pequeñas empresas puedan tener un acceso potencial a los fondos de subvención, tanto locales como estatales. Y también con socios externos, por ejemplo, Small Business Strong, y otras organizaciones de servicios empresariales para establecer un sistema que conecte a las pequeñas empresas con la asistencia técnica para proporcionar apoyo a largo plazo. Solicitudes serán disponibles a principios de febrero. Inscribas y um, es posible inscribirse en nuestro boletín para pequeñas empresas para obtener más información y detalles. Okay, at this point, I will pass it on to Dr. Basola Ujikutu, Director of the Boston Public Health Commission. Thank you, Mayor Wu, and thanks everyone for coming. I'm also incredibly excited to be here. Um, the Be Together initiative, along with this testing site and others that we will be opening soon, are part of a comprehensive plan that we put together as a city to keep Bostonians safe and healthy, particularly during this surge. So as Mayor Wu mentioned, this is a walk-in testing site, and it's free, um, no appointments are necessary. This is really a vital resource for the Roxbury community and nearby communities. We know 
know that COVID-19 has disproportionately imp impacted um, people of color and exacerbated existing barriers to care. So we're really proud to open this site in the heart of Boston's black and African-American community. I'd like to sincerely thank CIC Health for partnering with the commission and with the city to open this high capacity site. They will be able to test up to 1,000 people per day. And going forward, the bowling building will be open Tuesday through Saturday, 12 to 8 p.m. for testing. So in terms of the other two testing sites they were opening, I just want to give you a little bit of information on them. So the Lila G. Frederick Pilot Middle School in Dorchester will be opening at the end of this week for testing. In the following weeks, it will be open Friday afternoon through Sunday. So Friday 5 to 9, Saturday 12 to 8, Sunday 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. In addition, in Mattapan, we're opening Jubilee Christian Church. Um, they are hosting a testing site um, uh, for us, and that will open next week and be open Tuesdays through Thursdays, 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. So we're really trying to open up this resource for people and make it easy for people to access testing. And this is, of course, in addition to Anna Cole and West End House, which are standing testing sites. I also wanted to make a few comments in regards to the ongoing surge and, and provide you with an update. I think that there is some new data that, that's important for people to hear. So I'll start by saying I'm cautiously optimistic. Our current COVID-19 positivity rate in Boston is 26.5%. That's down 5.2 percentage points from the previous week. As you may recall, we were up at 32%. This is still very high. One of every four, more than one of every four individuals who have tested in the past week have tested positive. So still an area of concern, but again, cautious optimism. Cases of COVID-19 reported each day are down 33%. A little over 1,700 have been reported on average daily. Our emergency department visits have also decreased 23% over the past week. And I'm proud to announce that 81% of Bostonians have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, and that's a 36% increase in new vaccination uptake compared to the previous week. As a city, we are almost 70% fully vaccinated. But the reason why I say cautious optimism is because our hospitalizations are still increasing. Adult hospitalizations are up 35% compared to last week, and pediatric hospitalizations are up 56%. We know that hospitalizations lag behind testing, so we may continue to see increases in hospitalization for the next couple of weeks. With the, keeping all, all this in mind, we need to continue to get vaccinated and boosted, wear well-fitting masks, practice physical distancing, and test for COVID-19, which is why we um, uh, opened this site with CIC. From the perspective of a doctor, I think it's really just important to know that if you test positive, you need to isolate and, and don't expose others if you can help that. If you cannot isolate around home, you know, you need to wear a well-fitting mask and avoid sharing personal items within your, within your household. If your symptoms are mild, I think that you should be staying home, staying hydrated, get a lot of rest, monitor your symptoms, and use over-the-counter pain relievers or fever reducers. But if you're at high risk for severe COVID-19 and you test positive, you should contact your health care provider for more information and guidance. Early treatments to prevent severe disease are available. And you can call the mayor's health line at 617-534-5050 for assistance if you do not have a primary care provider. So please monitor your symptoms and the symptoms of your loved ones closely. You should contact 911 if you, severe, if you experience severe symptoms, such as difficulty breathing, pain in your chest, altered mental status, new onset confusion, or trouble waking or staying awake. By getting vaccinated, getting tested, knowing when and how to seek care, we can keep ourselves and our neighbors safe and healthy. We can also support our first responders who are critically overworked, our frontline health care providers who, again, are also critically overworked, and we can get through this surge together. Thank you. I also want to turn it over to Rodrigo Martinez, the Chief Marketing and Experiencing Officer for CIC. Uh, welcome, everybody. I don't know if there are other questions. I'm just going to give you the f a few uh, pointers on how the uh, operation and experience is going to work. Uh, CIC Health, every time we open a site, whether the vaccination sites we ran last year uh, or some of the testing sites that we're running around the city and the state, we want obviously everybody to have, first of all, a safe experience. We want it to be a welcoming experience. We want to be efficient. Uh, and everybody should come out saying, that was great. And that's what we want to do. We're implementing this ticket system. Uh, as Mayor Wu explained, part of the challenge of having a site that doesn't have appointments is that people will arrive at any time, and they expect to be able to get 
a test. That, of course, causes long lines that we've experienced in other sites. So once we have people in line and we have a few people outside, 25, 50 people, our staff will then come out and offer a ticket to write a time where they, it might be convenient for them to come back so that they don't have to wait in line. They can go about their day and come back either this day, you know, the same, same day or a different hour or maybe the next day. We're trying to avoid lines. And as we go along, uh, we will, uh, we will um, improve the system. People will walk in from this main door in the corner, line through the snake. Everybody needs to have a lab pass account if they have the ability to do that. You just, as you will see, you have QR codes quickly, takes a few minutes, write in your name, your, uh, your email if you have one, et cetera. Then they will come in here and they're gonna test, uh, they're gonna check in in one of these. We're going to check in here, uh, and uh, Dr. Rajakutu has kindly offered to, uh, to do a test herself, so you will see that in a second. Just quickly check in uh, the name, the email. Most importantly is to receive the results of the test. So that's why we require an email. There is a possibility to do it without an email, and we, one can call in to get a result. But ideally, the easier way to do it is for somebody to have an email address, then they can get the results back. And once they leave the test after they're here, they check in, they will get a swab, get a tube, they will go uh, test in one, any of these stations. They position the tube right in this box that goes to our partner, the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. These are taken there every night, and then they get processed overnight. And then we have uh, a little card, both in Spanish and English, to remind everybody how do they get the results uh, within 24 hours on average. I don't know if there are any questions at this point, Okay. Can we take? Can we take? Can we take? I, I want to make sure everyone gets to speak quickly, and then we'll do questions at the end for everyone, if that's okay. And I know, I know, <laughs> trying to keep us on schedule to make sure that that we can open here. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Chief Edu. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, Chief Shigun Idowu of the Economic Opportunity and Inclusion Cabinet. I want to thank, or first of all, congratulate uh, our Boston Public Health Commission and CIC for opening up this space. My grandmother takes the 44 every day uh, to transfer here and go downtown, and so I'll be sharing this information with her because this will be an easy place for her to stop by and get tested. Um, and also while we're here, I just have to say and make a pitch, uh, since we're here in the bowling building, we have to be out of here by noon. Noon is a great time for lunch, so if you don't mind stopping by Soleil Restaurant right across the way, uh, they make great food, and so you can either stop by there or Dudley Cafe for a cup of coffee if you get a uh, go somewhere else speedily. Um, but again, today we are announcing uh, the replenishment of the Small Business Relief Fund uh, with $5 million, working with our colleagues in the Boston City Council. This is something that we heard from our small businesses last week when the mayor and, and our team went to Alston to talk to small businesses prior to the mandate to ensure that we were providing all the support necessary to be prepared for January 15th and beyond. All of them, of course, were open and, and supportive of the mandate, but what we heard from them loud and clear was that they need additional support uh, to be able to survive the winter months and make it to the springtime and summertime. And so what my team has been doing is making sure that we're not only uh, replenishing uh, this small business relief fund for our businesses, but providing as much support as possible to make sure that they can last beyond just uh, this particular grant. And so we're happy to be working with our colleagues in state government, which uh, has an additional set of money uh, via the legislature who approved an ARPA bill last year, providing $75 million for small businesses across the, uh, the Commonwealth. And so in working in partnership with the state, we're going to make sure that our businesses who are applying for our fund have access and knowledge about this uh, additional money to ensure that they have access to both funds and potentially more funds to help survive uh, until the springtime. But that's not where we're stopping, because it's not just about uh, getting the check. It's also about helping to create a plan to ensure that you can live beyond just these uh, one-time uh, grant offerings. And so working with groups like Small Business Strong, uh, we're ensuring that uh, all of the small business ecosystem, all of the business support organizations are on hand to provide uh, technical assistance, long-term planning support for our small businesses, whether they're awarded or not, because our small businesses, need, again, need a lot more than just the check. They need this wraparound support service to ensure that they can survive well beyond not just the winter, the spring, the summer, but beyond COVID-19. 
Uh, and just for a couple of numbers, so to date, the city has awarded more than $28 million to over 5,000 small businesses already. And in this small business fund uh, that we're replenishing, our small business team led by Natalia Erdebe, uh, the neighborhood business managers have helped to ensure that uh, close to 600 of our small businesses have received over $7.5 million. And so this is going to go a long way to supporting even more businesses. But again, this technical assistance is going to help ensure uh, that our businesses have a plan for after uh, COVID-19. So thank you, Mayor and Council colleagues, for, for helping to make this happen. I want to thank Superintendent Brenda Caselius too, for being here. Do you want to say a few words, Superintendent? You can say a few words. Give a quick update. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get asked anyway. Well, I just want to thank the mayor and um, also Dr. Ojukuchu for her incredible partnership in this testing site, as well as testing our students across the city and helping guide our uh, health response in our schools. This is another major support to the Boston uh, employees here, Boston Public Schools employees here, as well as the Roxbury community that I love and just live a few blocks down. So it'll be really nice to be able to uh, have this available. Also, uh, the Mattapan site and the other sites going around around the city just provide for another opportunity for our employees in Boston Public Schools to get tested, make sure that we're not bringing COVID into our schools and keeping everyone safe. So thank you. And I want to thank our city councilors as well for their incredible support of the mayor and our initiatives to support our community and in, in keeping safe and healthy. So thank you, Mayor. And I'll invite up our host counselor today, uh, District 7 Counselor Tanya, Fern Tanya Fernandez-Anderson. Morning, everyone. Tanya Fernandez-Anderson. Uh, District 7 City Councilor, uh, just saying that thank you so much uh, for the Mayor's Office and looking forward to working with Office of Economic Development as well. I know that, um, you know, just speaking to District 7, the business owners uh, directly, I want to say that I myself, a formerly uh, entrepreneur and business owner, and also work for Main Street, so I do understand deeply the technical support is very needed, but also making sure that things are linguistically appropriate or um, just meeting people where they are. So if you need support in terms of uh, connecting with those technical s assistance or just the breakdown of how these grants or things are working, please contact our office. So whatever language, city council district set. Muito obrigado and thank you so much for everything just saying in all languages that we it's important that we create uh, linguistically um, does, does the supports in different languages and just breaking it down to meet people where they are. Um, if you need help with applying for these grants, with understanding these processes, with just connecting, please contact our office and we're here to work with uh, Office of Economic Development and also the mayor's office to make sure that everybody is getting the support that they need. Thank you so much. An at-large counselor, Ruthie Lijan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Ruzi Lujan, at-large city councilor here. Uh, very thankful for the work of the mayor and the administration and uh, BPHC for uh, increasing the number of testing sites. We saw that that's been an issue here in the city. Um, and I also am, am encouraged to see a new testing site opening up in Mattapan. Um, along with testing, got to make sure that we continue to get vaccinated in our communities. Um, you know, Mattapan, as an example, we have a lot of work to do to continue bringing up the vaccination numbers there. And the way that you do that is by opening up walk-in uh, walk vaccination sites that, as my uh, colleague, Councillor Fernandez Anderson, was saying, that are uh, language accessible. Um, we know that we have large immigrant populations in our city, especially in Mattapan, uh, where I grew up. There's a large Haitian population, and so we have a lot of work to do to meet people where they are and to make sure that we uh, we uh, combat the disinformation that is out there regarding vaccination, right? The work is not over. Our numbers are high in certain neighborhoods and low in others. And it takes all of us together, city council working with the administration to really get those numbers up. Um, encouraged by the work of uh, Chief Irou and um, uh, supporting our small businesses. I also second getting a sandwich from Soleil because it's really, they're really great. A lot of our small businesses are really struggling right now, uh, especially the ones that started right at the beginning of the pandemic. And so we have a lot of mo more work to do to support them to not s make sure that not only they survive, but they also thrive. So thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to, again, encourage everyone to continue to get vaccinated. I encourage everyone to continue to get vaccinated because it's really, really important to protect our 
protege communitaire nous. Um, and I know that in our in the Haitian community, uh, we need to make sure that we are getting the message out there that these vaccines are safe and that it's a way of not only protecting ourselves, but our neighbors, our children, and our community. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Questions? I know we're on a, okay. <clears throat> Long the clinics are going to last for, and do you know the cost to the city? I will defer to the expert here. Great. So our plan is to keep these sites open as long as they're needed. To, they need to be open. Um, we would like there to be access to testing as well as increasing our vaccination sites throughout uh, this winter surge, obviously. So throughout February, throughout into March, we may need them beyond that. So we're really keeping it open. You know, our initial contract was for three months, but we plan to continue that if necessary. Um, and we're certainly, you know, obviously watching our, our budget, but we're we're definitely, you know, considering the need here in Boston and, and we want to meet those needs you know I I would like to give you the, the number and maybe after this I could give you the exact number because um, I, I don't have it right off the top of my head why now for opening these sites and where are there barriers to opening these sites earlier Dr. Ojukutu and I and the team have been on calls almost every day tracking down locations, going out and visiting, making sure that there was appropriate space so that the facilities could be set up in a way to accommodate lines or have tents outside, as well as people inside spaced apart the right way. So uh, we have gotten recommendations from many folks in the community also as to which sites could be accessible for transit or tied with other organizations who can help with outreach. And so I'm really grateful to all of our community partners. We have been going as quickly as possible on this and continue to assess and adjust and work to meet the demand out there. Sorry? Same question. Um, en este momento de urgencia es importante de continuar nuestros esfuerzos de, de um, asegurar la seguridad y salud de toda la comunidad. Um, yo sé que, que la urgencia es, es, es más grande, pero cada día con la uh, colaboración de líderes en la comunidad y, y um, en, en municipio, uh, consejo de consejo municipal también. Continuamos a expandir uh, la, la, los recursos que es acces disponible para toda la comunidad. We continue to see the vaccination numbers grow very quickly, and our communications will go out today to individual city employees who have not yet submitted proof of vaccination. So. Once those individual notices go out, we expect to see some continued work as well in connecting people to vaccination clinics and making that possible. We have more clinics scheduled throughout this week, specifically available for city workers. Um, and, I, and City Hall now has a clinic, I forget which days it is. So, <clears throat> So we have clinics at City Hall now twice weekly, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and those are open. It's open to everyone. It's not just for City Hall workers, but we want to make it as convenient as possible. We've also supported vaccination efforts for the Boston Police Department, the Boston Fire Department, and um, certainly for our teachers um, and staff within BPS. And I'll just note that um, far more of our city workforce has been out because of COVID positivity than we anticipate when it comes to uh, a lack of vaccination. And so we're continuing to work to close those gaps. It is the number one thing that all of us can do when it comes to keeping our community safe. Yeah, I know that also um, communities in East Boston have also been impacted by testing. Is there any consideration to open a high capacity site in that area or is that something that y'all are looking into? Yeah. yeah. So yes, we are aware that there are some challenges both in regards to testing and vaccination in East Boston. And we're talking to both East Boston Neighborhood Health Center as well as the other community organizations in the area. And we'll, we'll certainly look into, uh, you know, filling that, that need in, in East Boston. Yeah, um, it was a couple weeks ago when the images of hundreds of people standing in line for three plus hours in the cold started circulating at multiple of our sites. Um, our city cabinets have come together and worked very quickly. Even a few days later, before new sites were opened up, there were he uh, 
heated tents set up outside the Anacol Community Center, and since then, um, much of those have not even been necessary because expanded hours have helped to reduce those lines. So that's been incredible work led by Dr. Ojukutu and in partnership with so many of our city departments as well as community partners to make sure that we can meet this need. Um, we will continue to monitor the situation. We know that even as the surge seems to be, fingers crossed, a cautiously optimistic, uh, moving in the right direction, there will be continued need for testing even beyond that as people continue to make sure to keep their families safe and think about before attending events or or indoor um, activities to to get tested. We want to make that available and convenient for all. So it's safe for people to stay in line next to each other who think they might have COVID inside oh, the building. Right? Have okay. um, absolutely. So when people come in, we're going to be giving them a surgical mask to lay over any existing masks that they have, one for perfection. Um, all of our uh, people that are waiting are going to be spaced six feet apart in order to prevent um, any potential uh, spread, maintaining physical distancing guidelines. The average turnaround time for a person to check in, collect their specimen, drop it off and exit is three minutes. So with 20 stations, on average three minutes, we're going to be bringing through a tremendous number of people very quickly. So I don't think that the lines will stay static. They will keep moving and that's why we have created so many stations um, in this facility. I want to invite State Representative China Tyler up to say a few words, and then I think we could probably take two more questions after that because I want to clear us out before this opens at noon. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Mayor Wu, for inviting me up. Um, I just really wanted to thank um, everyone for their partnership here. Um, we hear a lot about vaccines, and we hear a lot about just accessibility to actual vaccines, but what we don't talk about sometimes is trying to manage the pandemic um, in a testing aspect. Um, so this partnership is a very important one because we want to make sure that folks feel safe when they're in the streets and they're at home and they're at work or they're with their families. And so I just want to thank everyone for their partnership. Um, we will continue to try to do all we can um, on the state level to manage the opera funds to push towards managing the pandemic. Um, and I want to thank everyone for coming out. Thank you. Yeah, arguments are ongoing as we speak, or, or maybe just wrapped up. I, di I didn't get the full update, but um, the city of Boston is before the Supreme Court right now arguing this case. We, um, we know that city government has a responsibility to ensure that all voices are heard, and we want to manage the, the property that we own and the messages and communications that city government is putting out to represent and be inclusive and welcoming to all of our residents. So uh, this case is one that had been found in the city's favor at both levels of, uh, of, of the courts prior to the Supreme Court taking this up. And we are going to continue to make our case and see how um, they rule on this. Sorry. Yeah, um, I am someone who comes from an immigrant family and have been at so many of the ceremonies and flag raisings where community members can see their heritage reflected in the raising of a flag of their heritage or ancestry. We also pair community celebrations with these events. So it's been quite painful uh, not to have this program ongoing while the litigation in the court case is ongoing and it may go through the summer as well when many of these events usually take place. So we're working with community groups to find other ways to celebrate and make sure we're still highlighting the diversity of our city, the many heritages and cultures that come together to make up Boston. And uh, once this is resolved, we will figure out a way to continue doing that in the city of Boston. One more question. Okay, thank, thank you, you everyone. So what, uh, as we planned and we agreed right now, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me for a minute. I have a plan here that we've been working on for many, many nights, so please be respectful. Uh, Dr. Rajikuta now has kindly, uh, is going to test right here. She's kindly volunteered to test. 
If you want to take some footage of that, you're welcome to do so. And then we have to clean out because we have our guests coming in starting at noon as we planned every day. Thank you.